my name is Jonathan Cham and we're going to be covering the workspace view within the Tivoli Enterprise Portal. This is only one video within a series that I've been creating so feel free to check out the other videos. We're going to be talking about the overview of the workspace within the Tivoli Enterprise Portal, how to customize charts and data, how to find items, and how to rearrange the different views within the workspace. So what's the workspace? The workspace is the working area of the Tivoli Enterprise Portal. Whenever you click on a particular resource or item in the Navigator view, a workspace will appear if it has been identified. The Tivoli monitoring agents will come with default workspaces. Each workspace has characteristics that can be modified and edited. We're going to cover how to use these workspace areas and in a later video cover how to actually customize and create your own personal workspace. I've included a screenshot to give you a better idea before we jump into the Tivoli Enterprise Portal of what the workspace area looks like. As you notice on the upper left hand corner is the navigator view which I covered in another video. The rest of the area box in a blue line is the workspace area. Each workspace can be customized and tailored to the way you want it to look. Okay great so let's dive into the Tivoli Enterprise Portal and let's take a look at what type of workspaces we have to work with. So notice that when I bring up the Tivoli Enterprise Portal the first thing we see is situation, event console, message log, open situation counts. So this is the workspace under the enterprise workspace. So when I click on that, this workspace will come up. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of our LPARs, MVSA. And we'll take a look at the MVS operating system agent, which is the ZOS monitoring agent. So when I click on that, notice that a new workspace will come up, as we see here. And here we see multiple windows within this workspace. Here we have workload CPU usage, common storage, situation event console, etc. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six different windows. We can remove any of these windows or we can add more windows, whatever suits your purpose. Let's take a look at the properties of this workspace. We can click on the edit properties which is located in each of these windows as you see here. So I can get to the properties of this workspace from any of those edit properties links. When I click on edit properties it'll bring up the workspace properties window. When I click on the twisties you'll see that we have access to all the different windows within this workspace. For example we see workload CPU usage is right above this common storage is over here. So from this window we can access the properties of any of these other windows within the workspace. Again from this properties window you can see all the different elements within this workspace. There are two bar charts, three tables, and one situation event console as you see here. Let's go ahead and zoom in on one of the bar charts so that we can get a sense of how to navigate one of the bar charts within the workspace. So what we'll first do is we will maximize the workload CPU usage by clicking on the maximize icon. Notice that we zoom in and we can see the data much more clearly. If we had a lot of data points we could drag the section that we want it to zoom in on and it will zoom in on the area that you selected. To zoom back out or to go back to the default view press the escape button on the keypad. To bring it back to the its original window size we can click on restore and it will bring it back to its original state. Let's say we wanted to get rid of the workload CPU usage. We could click on remove and it would disappear. So now that I closed the workload CPU usage window, let's play around with the way the data looks here. For example, 
let's change this table that the common storage window sees and let's change it to a table instead of a bar chart. So what we would do is we would go to this table icon up here, click on it, and then click on the bar chart within the common storage and you'll notice that it changes it into the table format. To change it back into the bar chart format, we would click on the bar chart, click on the table, and we would go ahead and select the different attributes that we want to chart. We're not going to go ahead and do that, but you see how easy it is to go ahead and change between different formats. So we'll go back to our original state. Now another thing I want you to notice is that on the upper left hand corner of each of these tables, you'll notice a specified time span for query. If we click on it, you can specify the time span that you want to look at. Click on it to see the span of time you can view and let's see what's been going on for the last five hours. Notice that it brings up five different sets of data for the last five hours. And if we wanted to zoom in like we discussed before, you select the set of bar charts that you want to look at and it will zoom in. To zoom back out, press the escape button. Let's go ahead and change this back to real time. Another feature I want to demonstrate is changing the way the data looks. So for example, if we wanted to filter this data to only show the storage that is using more than 30%, we can click on the properties. and the common storage properties will show up. We click on filters. And under in use percent, we would click on greater than 30. And if we click on apply, you'll notice that one of them disappears. The one that disappeared was the SQA storage. As you see here, that is the only one that is below 30%. If I click OK, you'll notice that only three of the bar charts show up. This is how you can filter the amount of data you want to see in your charts. Another feature I want to show is how to find items within a table. Let's go to Mainframe Networks. TCP IP MVSA and let's click on applications notice that a new workspace shows up each of these different attributes within the agent bring up different workspace views. Now, let's take a look at the application's summary table. If we want to get information about the application FTPD1, we can go ahead and search for it. FTPD1. And let's take off case sensitive, find, and you notice that it highlights the item that we were trying to search for. That's how you can find data within a data table. Now let's restore this view. And the last thing I want to show you is how to move windows around. Some may not like the way the workspace is laid out, possibly for personal reasons. We can just move the windows around the workspace by dragging and dropping. Let's go ahead and 
move total bytes to the middle area where total retransmissions is. Notice that the window switch spaces. You see how they switch places and some people might have an obsession with windows having to be exactly in certain places and this feature lets them rearrange the windows to their preference. As you can see, the workspace is the working area of your Tivoli Enterprise portal, and it is the area where you will be accessing all your data. The workspaces let you customize and tailor the way data looks and presents itself, making it easy for you to find the information you need for your monitoring needs. I provided a short demonstration on how easy it is to maneuver through the different workspaces, and in our next workspace video, we're going to go ahead and talk about how to create and go into detail about how to customize your own separate workspace.